All right, so we're one more step forward. Um, we had a program, we created an arithmetic circuit. Uh, we pretty much encoded our program into an arithmetic circuit, which we converted into a set of equation. And then we converted that into the same set of equation, but uh, in the Planck form, so that we can do something with it. All right, what are we gonna do with it? Well, very simple. I'm gonna take all of the, I'm gonna see that as a table, pretty much. And I'm going to take all of the columns. Well, no, what am I doing? Uh, okay, give me a sec, let me correct that. We're gonna take all of the columns and we're gonna say that they are vectors. So L here is going to be a vector. QL is going to be a vector. And so by the way, I'm not gonna call them like I anymore. Um, they're, they're gonna be vectors that contain, um, that contain the, um, help that contain all of the different values that they can take throughout the equation. So of course, here we only have two equations, so it's gonna be uh, only vectors of size two. But you can see that L um, will be five and 20, minus 25, QL will be zero and one. So usually these Qs are just vectors of zero and ones, except for QC, which can be all the stuff. And, um, and here we don't really, have a vector for that because we already have a vector for L and R. Uh, so we're just going to reuse that vec the, the same vector here. But but pretty much what I want you to understand is that um, we now have you know L equals five and minus twenty five, QL equals zero and one, uh, etc. Already C um, C D says a table. Maybe I can we can draw the table. I don't know if it's gonna be more understandable if I do that. Um, but this is the, 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 the QL, this is R. Um, anyway, like you don't even have to see that as a table, but maybe, maybe that helps. And then I'm going to say that I'm gonna transform all of these vectors. Um, so usually we say interpolate all of these vectors into polynomials that, um, when evaluated to some points, give us gives us back the values of the vector. Okay, so that was a mouthful. Pretty much, I'm gonna create. I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna create a domain H1, which is let's say one and two. Here we only have two equations, but you could imagine that we have one, two, three, four, five, like as many numbers as equation. And oh, and also like all of these happen in, in a field, right? Like. Again, everything happens in a field, so these are points uh, in our field. Um, and I said as many points as equations, so here two, that means that we're kind of limited in the number of equations we, we, can, we can have here uh, to represent a circuit. Uh, pretty much we're limited by the, the size of the field. Right? Um, Planck is a universal zero knowledge proof system, so universal means that you can use it to prove any type of circuits um, and different circuits. You're not limited to one, uh, like other uh, gross 16 or other proof systems that uh, you know you set it up and then you can only use it for one circuit. Here you can use it for you know any type of circuits that you want, except that you're limited by, uh, by your field. Um, and so the size of your cir circuit is upper bounded. The number of gates is upper bounded. Um, okay, so anyway, we have a field, we have a domain H of two points for equation one and equation two. And we're going to say that, for example, L of X, we have a polynomial L of X, is the polynomial such that, such that um, L of, oops, sorry, L of the first point in our domain, right, is equals to five, and L2 is equals to minus 25, right? L was, Previously, the vector L was, uh, uh, well, sorry, should have deleted that, 5 and minus 25. So now we interpolate that into this polynomial, interpolate that. And you can use algorithms like Lagrange, uh, Lagrange, Lagrange uh, polynomial interpolation, for example, to, to transform uh, a set of evaluation. So here we want one, the evolution of the point one is five and the evolution of the point two is minus 25 to a polynomial. And it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. So there's nothing really secret about that. 
but we just want a polynomial that evaluates two different values, which represent the values in our um, in our two equations. Hopefully that makes sense. If that makes sense, uh, sorry, I'm going to delete this thing, but you know, it's a video, so you can go back and pause. If that makes sense, I'm going to do the same thing for all of these col um, values or columns, and I'm going to obtain uh, this equation. So I'm, go I'm gonna call that f of x, actually, this, and it's going to be l of x times q l of x plus r of x times q r of x plus o of x times q o of x. So all of these selector uh, values become, or selector vectors become selector polynomials times uh, q m of x equals zero. So no, instead of having, uh, you know, hundreds of equations, here only two, but you can imagine that a circuit is easily thousands and thousands of equations. Uh, we only have one polynomial. So we sort of compress the size of, of our circuit into a polynomial. And if we evaluate that polynomial at one of the point, points of our domain here, we get back one of our equations. So we can try, uh, for example, f of 2 is equal to l of 2 times ql of 2 plus r of 2, uh, qr of 2 plus etc. right? And L of 2, actually let me take that, L of 2 is the value here, minus 25, QL of 2 is 1, R2 is 0, QR2 is 0. And so here this minus 25 is the, the minus 25 that we had in our previous equation, which represents this uh, wire in the circuit. So it should all tie you know, together, like everything is, is connected, we're really, we're still talking about exactly the same stuff. Uh, we're still talking about that circuit, even though we, we're missing the copy constraints again, where this wire is equal to this wire and this wire is the same wire, um, which I'll talk about later. But with this polynomial, and, and you know, composed of L of x and Q L of x and R of x and Q R of x, we're still describing our system of equations. If that's clear, there's one more thing I need to say is that. Um, you know, here we have a protocol between a prover and a verifier. They're, I don't know, the prover is trying to prove the knowledge of a solution for a Sudoku problem or something like, something like that. So they're using the same program and the program is pretty much defined by this QL of, uh, QL of X, QR of X. Um, oops, I'm missing a plus here. This Q this Q, Q of x, oh wait, oh, what am I doing? That was a multiplication, all right? I'm a bit tired. So all of these, all of these selector polynomials, and even the constant one, are are describing the circuit. They're they're the gates. Um, they're describing what what ends up being multiplied and added, added, and you know they describe the constants. They pretty much describe the whole circuit except for the copy constraints, again, that I haven't talked about, that I'm going to ignore, and except for the public inputs. Other than that, they describe the whole circuit. The other values, uh, L, R, O, um, and, and these ones here, are, for the most part, the private values. Um, they're, they're either the private inputs or some intermediary values in the circuit, that needs to remain remain a uh, secret for for the whole thing to be zero knowledge. Okay, so that so 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 they, they, okay. There's one exception, which is the public input here. Um, I'm going to ignore that for now. It's a bit more. It's it's not that complicated, but basically, it's going to add on on the complexity. So, imagine that this is a constant or something like that. If you want, um, I know we didn't use a constant here. But just imagine that the, the prover cannot modify this for now, and that it's it's one of the private input. And at some point, I'll explain how to how we can actually fix some of these values um, uh, later. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to finally get into the protocol uh, because now we have a polynomial, 
and we know that this polynomial is supposed to be equal to zero. Uh, it's supposed to vanish in this domain of points, which the verifier knows as well. So the verifier just need to pretty much verify that um, the polynomial of the prover, which represents the execution of uh, that circuit with the values of the that the prover filled in, is indeed uh, you know equal to zero for all these 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 equations. So is 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 indeed constrained by by the circuit, by the the execution of that circuit. If we wrote the constraints correctly here, then the prover cannot cheat and and enter random things uh, and and still you know solve the constraints and get zeros here. Of course, besides the copy constraints. Okay.